committee tonight. Let's start. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance later <laughs> when we start at 7. Um, right now we're going to break to go into an executive session. I need a motion to go into executive session. I'll move that we go to executive session for the for purpose, the purpose of, of, of... It's on contract uh, negotiations. Shoot, that, I'm not on yet. Hold on. Do you have... Can you... I can. Contract negotiations. Contract negotiations. Thank you. Thank you. Seconded by Ms. Badger. I need a roll call. Mr. Morgan. Yes. 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 We will be back at 7. Thank you for coming to the school committee meeting tonight. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I apologize, we ran over uh, with our executive session. Um, before we get started, um, I'd like to start with a moment of silence, ask for a moment of silence for um, Tom Gallagher, Charles Tom Gallagher. He was a Spanish teacher passed away recently. Uh, he served us for 12 years, and he was, as I mentioned, a Spanish teacher at Plymouth South High School. So if we can take a moment to reflect on him, please. Thank you. And now, is there anybody here that wants to comment to the school committee tonight? Seeing nobody? We'll move on to our South High School first. Okay. Our update. Sorry. On yeah. January 26, we had a very successful tech expo for the incoming seventh and eighth graders from both Plymouth South, um, Plymouth South Middle School and PCIS. Also, on Tuesday night was our eighth grade parent orientation, which highlighted next year's schedule and the available courses to the incoming freshmen. Also, last Thursday, we had our National Honor Society induction, so that was great for all the juniors who were inducted, and some seniors as well. Report cards went out on Friday, so make sure that you start second semester off on a good foot. foot. Senior scholarships are due on Wednesday. Make sure your application is proofread and complete. This is a great way to help pay for college. Believe it or not, caps and gowns will be ordered soon, along with many other senior activities going on. The annual advanced placement breakfast will be Thursday morning. All AP students are required to wear the shirts they receive today or on Friday. The shirts theme this year is Star Wars. Honors science students will be competing at the Plymouth Public Schools Townwide Science Fair next Tuesday. Good luck to all. Also next Tuesday will be the Skills USA dinner. Beginning on Friday, student council will be selling crushes for $1 at lunches. All crushes will be delivered during K Block on Friday, February 12th. The Student Council Executive Board has also just passed in their Book of Excellence to the Massachusetts Association of Student Councils. Last year, we were able to achieve gold status, and we are hoping for the same this year. <coughs> Lastly, our sports. All teams are doing great this year. Three track students were able to win their events at the Massachusetts Coaches All-State Meet. At that meet, Devin Leahy also received the title of Outstanding Competitor for the results he had in his races. Finally, the North-South Hockey game will be next Friday at the Armstrong Rink, and we encourage you all to attend. Thank you, Brianna. Isabel, North? Hi, so our student athletes of the week were uh, Jackie Sullivan and Josh Postana. Both are on winter track, and they both qualified for state meets as well as receiving the Patriot League All-Stars and League MVPs, so those are very big honors. Uh, our eighth grade open house will be on Thursday, February 4th from 6 to 8, so this will allow students to get a tour of the building and see what clubs and sports are offered. Our report cards were distributed last Friday, January 29th. And next Friday, February, or this Friday, February 5th, uh, the sales and caps and gowns will begin. And the cost is $25, either a check or money order. Uh, the local scholarship application due date was extended. So you have to have all the applications in by Wednesday, February 3rd. And uh, we have our administrative breakfast on Thursday, February 11th in the cafeteria at 8. And 
uh, biology MCAS retakes began today and they'll continue on to Tuesday, February 2nd and a makeup day on Wednesday, February 3rd. Uh, winter break will begin on Monday, February 15th and we have finally chosen a date for our junior prom. It will be on Friday, May 27th at the Lake Pearl in Rentham. And today we had all of the diploma forms distributed to the senior class, so they should be uh, filled out and completed by the student and the student's parent or guardian and returned to Mrs. Follett in the main office before February break. Very good, thank you. I like that twist uh, hair thing you have. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Style it. Okay. Old business. I know we have an update, right? We're going to talk about it later, though, as a, as a, as an actual item, right? Okay. So it's there. New business. Any new business? Swinging back to the old business again. So old business item, uh, the uh, student data privacy in Google Apps for education in Chromebooks. Julia, I think. Uh, Dr. Maestas, you want to tee it up? Yes. Sorry. I um, think we missed an agenda item, but. Did I? Yeah. What did I, I did yeah, new business. Oh, oh so it is. Yeah, oh. After. Okay, I, I should know this. Okay, so this is what we have. We have um, Julia Colby. She's our coordinator of technology for the district. And uh, Julia um, sat with us. We discussed um, an old business item that had to do with uh, privacy of student information. And it had to do with when our, our, our kids log into Google um, and they log in and uh, where does their information go? How, how do we um, secure that? and uh, what type of systems do we have with the amount of um, software that we uh, share in our district and I think there's a lot of discussion one of our parents and one of our school councils mentioned that uh, there was a level of discussion at their school council regarding uh, how student information is actually handled by these companies um, so we had Julia um, go back and she created a document that um, I think you see in your packet tonight uh, and she's here tonight to present to you uh, some information on the partners that we have in our district um, that help us to deliver content to our students and also content but services. And uh, so I'll turn it over to Julia and she can uh, walk through the information she has tonight. Thanks. So Thank you. You're welcome. So what I'd like to do is um, just start with an overview of the document that you have on Electronic School Board and that's up there. Um, <coughs> Page one focuses on the settings for Chrome. There's user settings for Chrome and there's device settings for the Chromebook. So just these two different types of settings, there's over 100 settings. So I went through every single one of them when we went live with the Chromebooks. And then I met with Alan and we went over them and we, we picked what is you know the safest for the students. And then once we decided and we put those into effect, we met with the librarians, the technicians, the tech integration specialists, and we went over all the settings with them so they were aware of you know, what kind of settings are there for the students so if something would happen. Some of the ones that I'll just key is um, if a student logs in to Chrome, they are given a set of apps and extensions so they can't just go and download anything. So when they log in, they're given the ones that we've chosen, we've met as a department, and we've chosen, you know, select ones. They also, their local user data is erased, so when they log out, it's all gone, so nobody can get back in and, and look at their user data. If they're on one of our Chromebooks, their sign-in is restricted to the two domains, either the faculty domain or the student domain. And again, their local user data is erased on the Chromebooks. And we have it set so that when the Chromebook is shut down, all of the data is erased. On page two, we just talk about the different apps, the core apps, such as um, Google Mail. We have that turned on for students in grades seven through 12. However, the grade seven and eight uh, mail is restricted to only in the two domains, the faculty domain and the student domain and Aspen. So they can't send an email anywhere else for seventh and eighth. We have it turned on for high school, obviously, you know, if they use it for 
getting ready for college and things like that. Plus, you have to teach them, you know, what's safe, what isn't safe. So um, there is also, I listed more information. There's some great um, Google sites that talk about the security of Google, and they're good for parents to go on. Um, the google.com slash edu slash trust has a lot of good information about how Google handles the data. Also, um, there's information, uh, FERPASherpa.org has a lot of um, information on there for parents, what rights they have. If you look at page three, these are our core Google apps, and every core app has settings with it. So we, again, we went through all of the settings, and we have turned on specific things, turned off specific things, all based on, you know, security for the students. Page four, this is where it talks about what Google does. And I took this, um, the source is listed there, the google.com slash edu slash trust. So it talks about does Google own the school or student data? No. Does Google sell it to third parties? They do not. Are there ads in Google Apps for education? No. And then it talks about how Google keeps the data secure. But what some people don't realize is if you create your own Google account, like a Gmail account, it's very different from our accounts that we have at school with the Google Apps. There's no ads. Um, they don't mine the data. There's 24-7 phone and email support. Um, we get additional storage, but we have full administration of those accounts. So if there is ever a problem with any of the student accounts, we have the right to go in it because we own their, their accounts. If they use their own personal Gmail, we don't have that right. So that's another feature in the Google Apps. <coughs> and then page five talks about um, what does Google do for the Student Privacy Pledge. This was something that has been created by the Future Privacy Forum, and President Obama backs this. There's over 200 companies right now that have signed it. Microsoft has signed it, and Google has signed it. And it talks there about what is actually in that pledge so that they don't collect, maintain, use, or share personal data. They don't sell the student personal information. So there is a big push right now by education organizations out there to protect the data of students. And the FERPA Act, I think that goes back to like 1974. Like, mm. did we even have computers back? Like <laughs> 1974? Um, so when you think about it, it really does need an update. And they do have to put <laughs> restrictions on these companies the and what they're doing with the data. And so what does Plymouth do? In uh, the K through five, all of the elementary tech integration specialists in the September-October time frame, they do go over internet safety and they do cover what to put in your Google Docs. You know, you have to, you have to make sure that you, you tell these students, not only the students, but tell the teachers to reinforce it with the students. You don't want to put your social security number out there. You don't want to put any kind of personal information out in anything in the cloud whether it's Google Docs or Office 365 or Dropbox. So they do have the, um, the lessons for the students. The grade eight enrichment class, the students have, um, and that I actually was at one of them, and the students were pretty interested in the whole discussion. So they were informed of it. I have started newsletters to staff, and last year um, I met with Alan and we did a uh, sheet on password tips and how to detect fraudulent email. And then this past fall, I focused on tips for storing data in the cloud, what to put in the cloud, what not to put in the cloud. And then Plymouth Public Schools, as you know, enlists professionals. In uh, September, Katie Greer was here for both the middle school and high school. She talked about um, internet safety, digital privacy, things like that. So the last part was what can anyone do? And this is just more for people at home, parents. Um, there's two sites there that can give them more information, but some of the things that are really important for students are to personalize their settings, not only in Google, but they can't really personalize much of their settings in Google because we control that. But if they have their own Google account, they really should be going on and personalizing their settings, their Facebook, their Twitter, um, anything like that. 
And then um, clearing your caches is, is important. If you're doing something like online banking or anything, college applications where you're putting in information, if you clear your cache, it wipes it all out of there. So those are just things that we can, we can tell the students and try to get them educated on it. What can we improve on? Um, we will start working on some documents when the information is given to the students, like maybe a bulleted list of what we want to make sure that we tell them. And we are going to update our website that we've built for teachers with more information on the digital privacy, things like that. Um, and that's it. So if there's any questions, I know it's a lot of information. Um, so is this going to be shared with the parents? This doc document, is that what you said? What, what I would recommend is that we would put this on um, our school websites okay. uh, and that way p the parents could have access to that and just the general public as far as, sure. you know, we, we have a, uh, a significant uh, relationship and motivation with Google and, and if, yeah. um, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for Google, I, I think that we would not be able to reach students and merge this technology gap without them. So we, you know, the conversation, I learned a lot by you know, listening to the research that Julia did, and, and it seems that they really have become a partner with education. Mm -hmm. So I, I think yeah. this kind of outlines exactly what that means. It would be a good workshop topic for our parents. Oh, it will be. Yeah. Um, oh, it would I have be. one more really quick question. So, at coincidence, I had a parent actually contact me this week, mm -hmm. uh, middle school parent, sixth grader, saying, I just bought. I'm trying to do everything I can to help my child who's struggling. I bought them a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I set up and configure the Chromebook so that it mimics what they need in school? This is so great. All they I, have to do is log in with their Google ID from school. The apps and everything? And they'll get, they'll be limited. Yeah. Okay. Which is really, we've had some, um, a parent complain about that because they said, we got a Chromebook for our yeah, cause it's son, a, that's what and I thought. now we're limited. And we right. said, well, you're limited because you're on our domain. Okay. Um, right. But if they log on to our domain, yep. it's, they're going to get all the security that we have. I had told them pretty much this, <coughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. And then I also gave them the name of the tech, the integration oh, right. person, mm -hmm. in case they had another question. But she might be killing me if I keep giving her name out. I don't know. <laughs> so that's good. And it's just a coincidence that I just heard this yeah. week from a parent. So there are parents out there. I bought a Chromebook for my daughter last year, too. Mm -hmm. So and I wanted to make sure that she. Uh, right. So when your daughter logs on, mimics. you'll see like the wallpaper <laughs> comes up. And right. then it's, you'll get the apps that we have put on there. I know she's even logged into mine, and it defaults sometimes yeah. to hers <laughs> when I'm trying yeah. to. All right, well, that's good advice. Thank you. We, we add apps based on if we believe that we can support them, because mm -hmm. there's some third-party apps. There's some uh, Google endorsed. You know, they're all endorsed by Google. Otherwise, it won't be there. But we want to make sure that if we're going to have it on as an option, that we can support it. Yeah, no matter what device you use, as long as you log in as their school ID, Absolutely. then all yeah. these apps will yeah. be available right. to them. Mm -hmm. And that's really good yeah. for them to know. That's what I thought, too, but I just <coughs> wanted to make sure I wasn't giving out bad information. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Ms. I had the same question as Kim, the first one, but I did want to say thank you for putting this together because it was a big topic at our Plymouth South Middle School Council one night. So I'm just hoping that we can get that out. To, yeah, no, to the principal, well, obviously the principals probably know, but getting it out and just like pushing it out that way through social media or some way, yep. maybe your Friday notes as well. We'll do that. Just so that they, you know, can click on it. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Reports All right. So report. now we can get on my schedule. <laughs> a little bit off. Um, I have a few things to report on tonight. Um, the school committee will have an opportunity to uh, go to uh, South High School on Saturday. I would, uh, it might cool off a little by then, and uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit, so uh, be prepared for that. In addition, uh, as a result of the uh, warmer than normal temperatures this week, um, we're going to be pouring concrete on uh, the third floor, which is, uh, uh, we weren't going to do it until the spring, but it looks like we'll have 
uh, three uh, three days of 40 degree temperatures, and that's what's needed to actually pour. So that'll be happening, I believe, tomorrow. So that'll be pretty interesting. You might have an opportunity to have some concrete uh, under you. Uh, on Rich, you going to be there? You're invited if you. <laughs> Okay. So, um, and we have invited the building committee. So we'll do that first, get things out of the way, and then and then we'll go inside. So, um, we'll we'll start um, with that on on Saturday. Uh, tonight, I just want to give uh, the committee uh, 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 an update on uh, what's happening with wastewater. I know, you know, I never thought I'd be talking about wastewater at school committee, but um, I went to a meeting this morning uh, with uh, town uh, department heads, uh, town manager, and, and all the subcontractors with this uh, sewer break, uh, wastewater break. So we, we actually, uh, there are three different uh, breaches of uh, the wastewater uh, system and they are being uh, repaired, not repaired, but uh, a diversion is, is being installed to actually get around those. Um, so uh, we have uh, worked with and continue to work with um, Town Hall to send out correspondence every day as to updates. Uh, regarding road situations. I think some of you realize Summer Ave, Summer Ave is closed. Um, we've had some diversions there based on work that's happening. In addition, uh, there will probably be um, some disruption to exit five and six. And as soon as that information is um, solidified, I will uh, send it out to uh, the community. Um, in addition, uh, I've talked to Mr. Costin earlier today and. Um, if there are any major bus uh, delays or issues, we will work with the first student to manage those. Um, it does look like it's going to take uh, um, quite a, uh, an effort to get this um, bypass complete. Um, it'll, it's about um, another 5,000 plus feet of pipe that needs to put down. It's actually two sections uh, side by side. So uh, it's a big job. Um, it's um, you know, it's, um, I tell you, I, I'm very proud to be working with our DPW director. I mean, the, to see uh, crisis management in action and uh, Melissa Ray, the town manager, and everyone at the table working to try to just get this thing done. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big feat. So just to let you know, I will be put, putting information out through our uh, communication means. <laughs> uh, we'll get it to you as soon as we get it, all right? So. I, I appreciate that report. Uh, so I, uh, I'm thinking of uh, there's a rather large bus stop um, on uh, Summer Street mm -hmm. and Billington C Road mm -hmm. that is in the closed mm -hmm. down section right now, mm -hmm. and then of course Sleepy Hollow Drive is right at the beginning of that section. Mm -hmm. Are we having to move bus stops? Is my question. Well, um, what they're indicating is though that will open up, and they couldn't give a timeline. Um, the uh, project manager for the contractor is putting together a very detailed schedule and as soon as we have that schedule we'll be sitting down with the bus company to figure that out um, we do have the ability to have buses wave through but again we need to find out exactly what those issues will be in the morning um, but we'll be it, communicating yeah. with first student. I, did, I didn't take it somebody in my house took it but there was an all call tonight that came out not from the school department I think but it came out from the town yeah a a reverse 911 call went out tonight yes. and it was just to the residents of the impacted area mm -hmm. so they got calls I don't I don't know what the transcript that, of that call was but it was going to go out tonight letting them know that there, there were going to be some disruptions in traffic and they would give updates. Um, what we're going to do and what I would urge the general public is when they get these updates from our social media um, uh, means, they may want to forward that along to their, to their family members that are living in. It's, it's going to be more of a, a central North Plymouth problem than it is in South Plymouth. I said Billington Sea Road. I meant Morton Park Road. Yeah. Uh, that's closed right now. Uh, so as a school department, will we, when, when this more detailed information comes out about when, when roads are closed and school buses are moved, because buses can't get to that spot, yeah. will we then send out a call to those families? Absolutely. And um, we've been in situations when we have ro we've had roads closed and we do, we're familiar with that, right. that action. So again, um, we will work with first student 
as soon as we get information, we'll get it right to the to the bus company. I tell you, the the the, uh, the DPW and, and emergency management have been very responsive, and and they want us to to know this right away so that we can get it out to our families. But like I said, if people could just send it along, get it out to people, the more people that know, I think the less confusion will be. Accurate information is important as well. And so far, besides the obvious impact of transportation, there's no impact to any of our buildings or anything? No. Um, the flow normals are, are going to continue, um, you know, so they're just asking people to minimize water usage, uh, which would minimize drain usage. Uh, which would cause wastewater. So it, it really is, they're managing and they're doing a good job. Their plan is working. It's just, um, I'm sure we'll have updates um, as to, you know, the stage of, of full operation. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's, that's, that's what I have. That was it? Yeah. And we're also going, we're going to assist with the town as far as getting the word out. That's yeah, we, we uh, will be working with the assistant town manager um, to forward out and relay press releases and pertinent information in minutes of when we receive them. So as long as it takes to post it after we get it, it's going to be as soon as we get it, it'll be out there. That's good. I'm okay. glad we were able to help them with yep. that. Dr. Gould, I don't think there were any retirement. Oh, we do have one. one. We have one. Uh, we have Laurie Harris, who worked for Mr. Carson in the, as an accounting clerk for the grants and revolving accounts, uh, will retire actually this Friday after 12 years of service to the district. We'll miss her at central office, but wish her well. Ms. Badger. On behalf of my school committee, I'd like to thank Ms. Harris for her 12 years of service to the district and wish her a wonderful retirement. Yes. And correspondence. There was no tonight. And that brings us up to our school improvement plan update from Indian Brook Elementary School. We have Welcome. Principal Harold with his team. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Um, good evening. Um, thank you for having a school committee and central office staff. Um, <laughs> on behalf of the Indian Brook um, School Council, I'd first like to start by introducing everyone. I got to look to see the order we're in so that I can <laughs> put it in the correct order. The older you get, the more you need it. Um, on the end, uh, we have one of our um, moderate special needs teachers, Leanne McKenzie. Um, of course, everyone here, I'm sure, <laughs> knows uh, Ms. Sue Page. She is now our community rep, which has been wonderful. Um, next, we have Ms. Sherry Lawrence, one of our parent reps. Um, Eric Manfredi, the assistant principal, Dan Harold principal, and Nancy Canducci, she is a fourth grade teacher. Um, a couple of members could not be here tonight. Uh, Ms. Kara Jitsi is a parent, and she is probably somewhere over Chicago, some right about now. Um, we also have, um, um, excuse me, um, Wendy Marshall, who is a parent rep, rep and she is also a member of our uh, PTA, the president, as a matter of fact, so she really does a lot. And I should add that Ms. Lawrence is also a member of our PTA um, on the board. And we also um, have um, um, one teacher, Ms. LaPointe, who could not be here tonight. She is a fifth grade teacher, and she's probably at a basketball game with her son. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I do want to thank all of them for coming. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, for tonight is I'm going to go through myself goals one and two, and then I'm going to pass the mic over to Miss Lawrence. She's going to go through goal three. Um, it's a lengthy goal. You probably saw if you had a chance to look at the PowerPoint presentation because we had a lot that we um, added to that one due to some things we have um, going on at the school uh, right now. So what I'd like to start with is goal one, which takes a look at um, our instructional practices around ELA um, and some of the focuses we've had. Um, I have to be honest with you, and I, I know some of the teachers here can talk about this. I was a little bit panicked myself in the fall because um, 
our MCAS data before we switched over to PARC has not exactly been on that upward trend. We kind of flattened out and I was getting nervous because we put all these initiatives around the differentiated workshop model and all of our energy and all this cooperative and it started getting a little nervous. So I was extremely ecstatic and I know the staff knows I conveyed it to them for all their hard work how uh, well we did do as we looked at that transition to PARC uh, when you compare it to the state as well as our district. So, and again, I share the results tonight. So just to highlight a few things related to goal one around the ELA piece. Um, one of the things, as I mentioned, um, around the training, and I, I can't say enough about our two consulting teachers of literacy, uh, Rebecca Sater and um, Amy Baldwin, as well as our reading coach, Jen Yeager. Um, they have been phenomenal in supporting the teachers, as well as the teachers. They, I mean, our staff jumped on board with it. They've been running with it ever since, and they, um, I can speak, actually, I've had a conversation recently with Jen Yeager, and I mean, they're seeking her out regularly for support. So it's really nice that um, cooperative structures that we put in place, um, not only in the classroom with the students, but in our um, building with all of our teachers. Um, one of the biggest things we did do for the current uh, year is our, we have two consulting teachers of literacy and just like ourselves it's much easier if we can concentrate on certain grade levels because then we become more of an expert shall we say with those um, standards with the Common Core. So we, we um, restructured our two staff Rebecca Sater and Amy Baldwin and we basically have uh, Ms. Sater doing K-2 to and Ms. Baldwin doing grades 3-5. to five. So it really helps in that they can then have more expertise for those teachers in those grade levels plus they have a better understanding of the books and so forth that can support those programs so that was uh, a really a, a big benefit that's helped um, to keep things more um, streamlined within the school and those supports um, the other thing as I said the embedded professional development Jen Yeager I cannot say enough about her she has been a phenomenal resource her knowledge is just endless and um, her ideas you know you ask her to do something you meet with her and it, it, it's done it's phenomenal um, one of the things um, that we started talking about some years ago Jen and I are talk we talked about alternative assessments because um, we know our assessments today that we're dealing with such as park are not the traditional assessments that I grew up with where it was basically computation very factual kinds of information so um, looking at things through that application structure. She's done a phenomenal job with her uh, colleague, uh, Natalie, who have uh, oversee the um, Plymouth Literacy website, and they have a, a wealth of alternative assessments now for teachers to um, look at for all of the units of study throughout the reading. So it's really been a, a phenomenal transition to the entire process. Um, also, as I said, the um, one of the other things that we started a few years ago, and we kind of targeted even more so this year, and again, uh, Ms. Sater and Ms. Baldwin are overseeing that is every unit um, in the area of writing there's there's X number of units of which they have different types of writing nonfiction and so forth that each grade level uh, hits upon throughout the course of the year um, we chose a couple of, of those uh, writing samples that each teacher then gets together and collaboratively take a look at not their grade I mean not their class excuse me but another class so they can kind of get a baseline as to see what other students are doing within the grade level but also kind of that I mean everybody needs that self-check so to speak to see geez am I on target as to what I see my students doing versus other students in the grade level then they have an opportunity to share out with that information so again it's just another way of, of taking a look at some of that information that data and how it supports the improvement for our students um, so as you look at the second slide, you kind of take a look at, um, at a glance, um, how we fared against the district as well as the state. Um, I did put in there, and I wanted to make sure that I was aware of it, that I looked at it from the computer-based version. I'm sure a lot of you have heard a lot of information about the various testing. We had MCAS, uh, which we had the highest performance rate in the state. Then we had the paper and pencil, which they did a little bit better than those students who took the computer-based. So I think it's significant when you take a look at the data and you see collectively between um, the top two tiers what they're looking for, which is basically a proficient rating, um, how Indian Brook fared in ELA in grades three, four, and five um, amongst the state. Um, as I said, they were really um, um, significantly higher in all three categories, I mean, all three grade levels. So I said, it was a very impressive feat uh, that the teachers, and it's, again, from their work through just um, providing those t those students with those alternative ways of looking at information through that differentiated workshop model. So I applaud them. 
any questions on goal one? I'm sorry. I'm nope. trying to. I'm Keep trying to be good. Doing good. <laughs> Uh, looking at our second goal, which is again taking a look at the academics, but more specific to the area of math. Uh, math, I'm not going to hide, it's a little more difficult. We don't have those embedded um, people, such as the reading coaches, that we can rely on in uh, to support some of the math. But we do have Jen Powers, and she's as around as much as she can. She's done a lot of work this year with the teachers. They did a concentration with the lower grades last year because we had the EM4 rollout in the primary grades, and now this year. They finished that rollout of EM4 into the upper elementary, so there's been a little bit more of a focus on those grade levels to support them to get up to speed. It's totally aligned to the common core, so in that respect, it's been uh, very beneficial um, in those supports. Um, there's also been a lot uh, of work. I, I know recently we did a lot of inventory to make sure that all of our now support materials are up to date, and I'm referring to the hands-on materials. Um, and again, she's been instrumental in supporting that. She put out a survey for inventory to all the teachers to make sure that everybody has all the tools necessary to support those uh, new um, uh, program supports uh, connected to everyday math. Um, the other thing, the other two items of which, um, well, I'm sorry, the math coach, the DDAM online piece, but the other big thing is the first steps. Um, I'm sure you've heard about the first steps trainings that's been going on. Um, I actually took the course many years ago myself. Um, many of our teachers, I know Ms. Ganducci and so forth, have gone through it. But it's been, a, it's again, it's another way of looking at um, how to support children in that workshop model because it takes a look at where they are developmentally versus just where they are, where you think they should be because they're grade level. So it's, it's a great source to support both that pre-assessment to determine who needs the greatest support when you come to that unit of math and then taking a look at how the results fared when you take a look at those end results at the end of that unit. So again, that's been a big initiative. I know there's another training coming up now for teachers going forth, um, sub is permitting, uh, <laughs> but it's been difficult. Um, but as I said, that has been a, a wonderful um, feature. And again, looking at the next slide, taking a look at how um, Indian Brook fared against Plymouth as well as Massachusetts, again, taking a look at the computerized uh, base version. Um, although we did have a slight slip in fourth grade, you can see that, that uh, and that is a larger number of uh, special needs students, I will say, in the fourth grade last year, uh, moving on to fifth grade. Um, but still, percentagely speaking, um, we exceeded both the district as well as the state. So again, um, I applaud the teachers. It's not like I'm in the classroom doing it. They're in the classroom doing it. So they've done a phen phenomenal job of taking those initiatives, applying them in the classroom. And as again, I think we're seeing it through the supports um, and the outcomes. Okay. Any questions on goal two? Okay, thank you. I'm going to pass the mic then to Ms. Sherry Lawrence, actually. Thank you. Um, goal three is uh, near and dear to my heart with um, community engagement. Uh, having the ability to serve on the Strategic Planning Committee, we've been able to take what we did there and bring it into the building, uh, both as a PTA and as a school council. So <clears throat> we have been focusing on <coughs> getting the word out on what the teachers are teaching in the, in, in the classroom, what the students are, are doing um, um, as, as their school projects or after school activities and so on and so forth. We've been working collaboratively um, using Blackboard Connect and, and getting the word out through, um, through the PACE messaging and, and, uh, and, and really utilizing all of the forms of communication uh, quite effectively so that um, we feel a lot more engaged within the school community. Um, the new open house format, we ended up doing um, a single grade each night, and that allowed us to uh, really focus our energy to be more grade specific. Probably next year, we will go back to a model where we're doing two grades a night simply because six nights was a little too much. <laughs> um, we are um, happy to see that there are 19 teachers who are currently using um, teacher web pages in order to communicate what's going on in the classroom and that there are 11 teachers using class dojo to um, monitor student behavior and and to um, uh, make sure that everybody continues on the 
path that they need to go on. Um, as far as the PTA partnership, we have been averaging at least an event a month, if not more. Um, I am happy to say that we have over 100 members of the PTA um, at Indian Brook who are paid, paid members, including teachers. We've had the largest teacher engagement in the PTA um, in, in years, so we're thrilled about that. Uh, we have engaged um, over uh, probably um, uh, close to a thousand people over the course of the four months worth of events. Probably it's it's similar families coming out, but to have that type of engagement with our fall festival, casino night, holiday festival, book bingo, our curriculaps program, pasta night, science night, we have paint night coming up, and so on and so forth. So we are really um, focusing on providing good activities for the uh, for the Indian Brook School community. Um, one of the major initiatives that we have, if we go to the next slide, is our playground renovation initiative. We, um, we know that our current playground is not really up to par. Mm -hmm. um, it is at a point where the brackets are no longer able to be repaired and we've made as many repairs as we can. Uh, we currently have a situation where many kindergartners are not allowed on part of the equipment because it is just not safe. Um, so in honor of the 40th anniversary of Indian Brook for September of 2016, we are being um, uh, rather uh, uh, bullish about going after um, getting a new uh, the playground built in time for the start of the new school year with the expectation that the town will agree to allow full day kindergarten so that kindergarten will have a playground that they can play on. Um, it will be a gift from the community and from the PTA to Indian Brook, in, um, um, and that's why we're looking at it as a 40th anniversary um, celebration, and, and we're hopeful as a PTA to really use the next year to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the school. Um, with the Playground Renovation Initiative, um, I am leading a committee of roughly 12 people. Um, we have done uh, uh, engagement through a school survey where 76 families um, took part online to share their, their input about where we need to go with our playground. Our renovation goal is to have a playground where every young scholar can um, learn, grow, and play. Um, and as I said, we um, hope to have it installed in August of this year ahead of the um, start of the school year. Um, on the next slide, we list our current challenges where the uh, current equipment was installed in 1999. It's not able to be repaired. The main play structure not safe. Um, and it's too small for the current class sizes. There are people who are actually waiting to use the equipment in their limited recess time, and, and that's a waste of um, time. The play structure is not ADA compliant. Um, and it's also um, installed in an area prone to erosion and ground issues. So we are taking this as an opportunity on the, on the next slide to create something that will hopefully last. Um, we are looking at this as a once in a, in a generation opportunity to offer a, uh, um, a resource to the community, not only for the Indian Brook families, but also during the non-school hours for other families as well to have a place to go um, for uh, mobility impaired students. But also we are looking at zones for sensory, um, sensory integration as well as for um, um, places of imagination for the littlest of, of um, students. Um, the equipment is geared for core strength building, social skill building, imagination, creativity, and fun and it will meet all current safety standards. Um, on the next slide, um, uh, we are looking at doing zones of play for small group engagement, uh, more equipment choice so that the students will be able to actually play, um, and, um, and uh, um, there will be a piece um, in the back corner. It looks like a spider web type of thing. But that piece is actually going to get voted on by the students at the school. It, we are going to give them a choice of three different options. And we are going to aim to have that election be held on Feb 29 mm -hmm. ahead of the um, uh, primary. So we'll be able to incorporate <laughs> that into it, yeah. the um, curriculum. Um, 
when I also mentioned about the school survey, uh, all the students are also being surveyed either in the classroom or in the cafeteria to see what they would like to see happen there as well. Um, our goal for this fundraising campaign is $70,000. Um, the equipment itself is, um, is uh, pricing in at um, roughly 42,000. That spider web piece in the, in the back, depending <coughs> on what they uh, vote on, it, it ranges between 14 and $17,000. Um, the, uh, the safety flooring, if we go with a, um, with a wood chip mulch um, composite, that's probably going to be about $4,500. But in our recent school survey, parents had indicated that they would like to see the poured um, rubber or, or something along those lines. But that gets pricey. That's pricing in it at about $42,000. So if the money comes in, we'll gladly do it. But um, first and foremost, equipment um, supersedes uh, poured rubber flooring, in our opinion. Um, we launched publicly today in our silent phase of the fundraising. We were able to secure a $5,000 gift from Dunkin' Donuts um, through um, Cadet Enterprises, um, and and they will be supporting our um, uh, Harlem Wizards basketball game. That's our marquee um, fundraising uh, event on March 28th. I'll get to that in a moment. We also received a $2,000 grant from the Plymouth Education um, Foundation. We received um, a, f a $500 sponsorship from Crayon College, a $500 sponsorship from Marty's Buick GMC. Um, Rep Matt Miratori has also um, um, uh, given a, a $500 um, sponsorship towards the basketball game. Um, we have spoken uh, before the Sunrise Rotary Club. We're meeting with the BNI um, the business uh, folks tomorrow morning. Uh, we've already presented uh, materials to the other Rotary Club, and we're basically making the rounds throughout the community for their community support. And so far, we've been hearing all good things. So um, knock on wood, the money will also start coming in as well. Um, our, our two main events right now, we have Jump for Joy that will be at Sky Zone in Kingston next Wednesday, where they will um, give us um, $5 for every jumper if you present the flyer that's on our Facebook page. And that will go towards the, uh, the playground fund and, of course, the Harlem Wizards game. This, is, this event was actually selected um, uh, based on the community engagement piece of the strategic plan. We wanted to have the community come together for something fun, something educational as well, um, and just to have a good time by all. Um, the Wizards are, um, we're going to have their Broadway team where we'll have alumni from the um, Harlem Globetrotters um, who will be part of the team. They're all um, slam dunk champions in one way, shape, and form. And we have right now 20 uh, very brave Plymouth Public School teachers and administrators who will be led by Dr. May Estes, who will be going up against them and showing them just what we're made of. Um, so, um, uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. um, so we, uh, we have 850 tickets available for it at Plymouth North High School. We have already sold over 200 and we only launched tickets on Thursday. Um, so we anticipate this selling out. Uh, we also have, um, um, support from the, um, Mirbo Inn who has, donated a one night stay for one of our raffle prizes. Walt Disney World has given us four one day park hopper passes to also the raffle off. We'll have a 50-50 raffle and um, um, it's gonna be a fantastic event. Um, we are also challenging um, um, community leaders to sponsor 10 tickets apiece. Dr. May Estes actually uh, gave us the uh, challenge so that we can have um, 50 members of the community who would not otherwise have the opportunity to come out for an event like this um, to be able to come out. So we are uh, coordinating with the superintendent's office to really make it a big community event. Um, and as I said, you know, our conservatively, we should, we should make uh, f about $15,000 with this event that would go towards, towards the playground. So once you combine that with our TREX board sponsorships, our um, general donations, and all of the event sponsorships, we feel pretty confident that a $70,000 goal will be achieved in a four-month time frame. Um, so, 
Uh, that said, I'll pass it back to <laughs> Dan for goal four. Um, and before I move on to goal four, I just wanted to, <clears throat> because I know you had asked about the technology piece earlier on. Um, one of the things that um, I think is interesting, because you were talking about the Google piece, is I know Ms. Canducci has been doing a lot of trainings around it, so she can understand this <laughs> very much so. Um, at the elementary level, uh, teachers can create what is called a classroom in the cloud. And they actually, um, those children are placed in that cloud, their, their um, way of which they log in. And the teachers can actually determine what apps the children see. So it's even more finite, so, which is really great because the objective behind that is in the classroom, if you want you know, these five students to use this app when they're doing their independent time on the computer, you can set that up. So that's all they see. So there are even more items of which Google allows, which are, are great features, even at the elementary level, which is a great thing. And the other one I wanted to just uh, mention also is Class Dojo. Um, this is something new this year. Uh, I hadn't even heard about it until one of the teachers came to me. Um, it, it's a free app, but it, it's phenomenal because it's not only a way that you can communicate with parents, but it's, um, I, I can speak firsthand. I, I was talking to one of the teachers that started it I'm going to say probably end of October, and um, um, she has seen such advances in her students in the classroom because it, you communicate directly with the parents. You can also look at specific skills, which actually ties into our, our goal four, and that's why I wanted to segue to it, because we're taking a look at how we can create greater independence in students. And that's not just in the academics, being able to sit down and do their work independently, but it's their behaviors, too. And um, that's where that class dojo has really played favorably in the classrooms that some of the teachers are using it because they can pinpoint specific behaviors and then let parents know almost instantly if they wanted to how the child's doing. So it's and or you can also do it as a class. Our class had a great day today. We won or earned X number of stars if you're setting an, um, you know, some kind of incentive up. And all the parents can find out about that. So it's a great way to communicate in, in, in a variety of ways. You can do it one-to-one -one with the, the parent, or you can do it whole class. So it's really supporting some of those initiatives around that greater independence, which we're, we're really um, striving for. Um, and, and that also ties into um, our social thinking, our PBIS um, program, because that's something that we're looking at more at grade level, um, is what, are our ex what should be the expectations. Um, the workshop model has really supported that because in order for a teacher to meet with one group of students in a small group and rotate them in, you have to, even at the lower grades, to have a level of independence to be able to go over to this center and do this work and that work and so forth. And you can go into some of the kindergarten classrooms, you'd be amazed at how organized and structured and things how things flow so it really is um, amazing how the teachers have taken those management tools and applied them to support that model and also to increase students independence um, one of the things we're we're working on also is with the homework with parents that independence it's Johnny's homework it's not your homework and I'm saying that out loud so the parents will hear me say that um, it's much better and we've said this to parents that calling sign it if Johnny's having trouble I think the teacher would much rather know Johnny's having trouble than for them to bring it in all 100 percent correct thinking Johnny's wonderful he remembered all of those skills we learned today and it might not be the case so a lot of independence is going on related to some of those pieces that we're looking at at the grade level piece um, the other thing too is and I can't say enough I know um Ms. Spicer um, she has been running and supporting our peer helper program for I don't know how many years now. I, I know she's met with other principals in the district to um, push this out. We've been doing it for many years and it basically, we, we targeted fifth grade because that's the transition to the middle school and we've increased that expectation. We've added items to them and we, we emphasize you're not, we're not asking to be the police in the school but we're asking to support and be the role models of the school and even on the bus and, and helping other kids. And again, that level of independence, that level of expectation, you're, you're the older students. We're looking for you to act as such and be those role models for the younger kids. So we've added that element um, this year with our fifth grade peer helper program. And, and it is, it's, it's, it's such a wonderful thing when you see kids who, they want to be in it. So the turnaround they might have in order to be able to try to get in it, because we do it three times over the course of the year. We change the groups. So if you're not in it the first time, that doesn't mean you can't earn your way into it. But they know in order to get there, they have to themselves show that they're going to 
relay those positive um, skills that we're looking for to the classmates and the younger. They go in and they help kindergarten students get on the bus. They go into the first grade classroom and help them out. Uh, they might even help, we have peer helpers that help in the front office. Again, it's giving them jobs and that expectation around that job that this is your job, you know, you have to do it and, and strive. So those are some of the things that we're trying to do to, um, again, raise that um, understanding of independence both behaviorally as well as in, through the skills um, and expectations of um, schoolwork. Very good. Any questions? Ms. Badger. I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say that um, the I know my little cousin is in kindergarten in Inbrook, and he'll be so excited about the playground and everything like that. But um, is there a way that we can get some sort of flyer that tells us exactly about everything? Perfect. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that we don't miss the opportunity to help out in our way. So it's awesome. And everything within the school looks The timing of our great. presentation worked perfectly. Yeah, perfectly. <laughs> Dr. Sorensen. That was a really good, that was a really good presentation. I on Facebook and today, it, the Dunkin' Donuts. Journal. Thank you. And as I listen to you all, I, I become, uh, I feel I'm becoming less, becoming more ignorant. <laughs> ignorant, because it's happening so fast. As I listen to the way you're teaching, how the Chromebooks are using, how the applications are happening, you know, we can hear it, but you know, I'm one of those people that's visual. I'm going to have to someday come in and watch it happen because I, I would love it. I love can't that. grasp love it. it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to grasp yeah. just by yeah. listening to it. You would be absolutely amazed because, I mean, upper grades, they, it comes inherent to getting older, a level of independence. But it is amazing when you go into a first grade classroom and see how seamlessly things work within a classroom. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. And it, again, it is a credit to the teachers, their management styles, how they figured out a structure to get all of that in in the course of a reading times period or a math time, mm -hmm. again, but it is, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've totally, uh, as you saw when we gave the tour last year, we've totally metamorphosized the classroom to look more collaborative, to look more inviting um, versus a traditional setting. So again, it's just every element has kind of starting to click and I think you can really see it in the classroom. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really exciting. Uh, I, I have a generic question to, the, to Dr. Maestas mm -hmm. or to uh, Mr. Costin. So as this money is collected uh, and you, the procedure for that, everybody here probably knows but me, uh, how, how do we, how do we uh, keep track of that? How do we organize it? Can you give me a little bit of a little outline of that? Yeah, we, we do not really touch these funds. These go directly to the PTA. Oh, this is all through the PTA. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes this is a this is an independent PTA okay, initiative. I, I missed that part. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. We are a um, tax exempt organization, so any donations will will receive a um, a letter f for tax purposes. Thank you. And, uh, and along that line, I'm assuming that the plans of for the playground and everything all run past yeah, Dr. Maestas' the, we, office. What we have right now is, uh, I mean, uh, Sherry can speak to it a little bit more if you want, like, but it's really just um, a starting point, which we were looking at because you need a foundational piece because it's yeah. already, I don't know how many times it's changed already. Oh, it's already changed <laughs> four or five times. Yeah. But we wanted to have something visual so people knew what they were giving towards instead of just. No, don't get me wrong. It, that's great. <laughs> no, it, we've, it's all really good. I just want to make sure that you're hooked with, into yep. it so that if it's yeah, only, we, we this will be long term yep. equipment on the ground. Right. So we just want to make sure. Yep. It we'll make sure that uh, Mr. Montron, who's sitting back there, uh, will <laughs> we'll have an opportunity <laughs> to sit down with everyone and talk through the issues. I know he's probably uh, waiting for that day, but uh, I, I know that we will be working with the PTA. Uh, with Ms. Lawrence, I know she's um, very, very um, involved in, in really su supporting this project to get this on the ground. And I know she, she's a detail-oriented person. Yes, yeah, and know I can that. tell you that those details <laughs> will then be shared with with our office. So I have a lot of faith in that. Me too. Great job. Great presentation. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Mr. Montron, now we have the facilities services update.
Entertaining. Good evening. Hope you're feeling better. That's a very tough act to follow. <laughs> we'll give it our best. Feeling better, thank you. Good. Getting there. Hopefully, I don't go into a coughing situation for you. Uh, this is to discuss the Department of the Facility Services Office. We're located at 10 Oak Street, the old Oak Street Kindergarten. Uh, there's myself, my assistant Frank Silver, and the energy manager Chris Hastings that you heard from last week. Right. Uh, the next slide is just a quick little quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Firing away the best prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. That's what we kind of hope that we do every day. So. I want to thank you for giving us the time to do this brief presentation. Uh, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis changes every single day. Uh, it depends on what's going on in the building, uh, the dynamics of teaching and the scheduling throughout the building determines who's going to do what from the custodial department. Uh, and that happens all the time. It's a department of 84 full-time equivalents. Uh, from myself, the assistant, the energy manager, we have two full-time secretaries, uh, scheduling coordinator for facility use, six skilled craftsmen, uh, 12 head custodians, 48 custodians, and 12 maintenance custodial floaters. Uh, <coughs> We clean and maintain 17 buildings, all of the fields and grounds that surround the buildings. We prepare the capital and budgeting for the school district. We do vehicle maintenance, trash removal, deliveries. Uh, we take care of the absenteeism for all of the department, whether they're housed out of my office or in a building. Uh, the work audit scheduling, facility scheduling, and utility tracking. The 17 buildings are a total of 1,607,094 square feet. We happen to have a very, very big district, and it's spread out over 104 square miles. Uh, it's quite a bit. And forgive me for going so fast, but I'm trying to get through this before I, yeah. <laughs> I can feel it coming. Uh, our groundskeepers, head custodian, and maintenance staff take care of approximately 372 acres of fields, grass, and parking lots. Our entire staff is responsible for all the snow removal and ice control during the winter months. As you know, last year that was quite a challenge. This year we're basking in the sunshine. Watch it, mm. karma. It's for the time being. Yeah. Yeah, don't uh, loud. The budget and capital, we've prepared and will administrate the operating budget for the district. And FY17 is $2,039,806. We've already presented that to this committee. Mm -hmm. And we've already presented to this committee the capital for Fiscal 17 in the amount of four million, <coughs> excuse me, five hundred and ten thousand one hundred and fifty-six dollars. The district has a total of forty-four vehicles. Uh, that includes school buses, sped vans, uh, truant officers' vehicles, everything. Uh, our core responsibility for our department is our own vehicles that include six dump and utility trucks, two stake body trucks, an aerial lift truck that we use in for getting the street lights, uh, trash compacting truck, which if you recall is what one of the vehicles we're looking to replace this year in capital, uh, a cube van, three F-150s, two vans, and three SUVs. The repairs and maintenance for all these vehicles, including <coughs> the rest of the 44, are being done with one individual that works out of North High in our maintenance garage. Uh, and we do sub out some of the work to 
specialized shops. Trash removal is a big part of the overall operation. Uh, our truck driver is responsible for picking up the trash at all our facilities. He goes from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, and that's all he does is drive in a big circle from school to school to school, emptying dumpsters, run out to see mass empty it, come back and keep going. Uh, it's not particularly the job I want, but uh, <laughs> he does a great job at it, and we're grateful. Uh, they also, uh, maintenance people mainly deliver supplies and materials from one building to the other as needed. Uh, we will constantly get calls that, that someone's moving from one school to another or, or a program needs boxes delivered that were delivered out to central office that have to go to six different schools and we get someone over there, divvy it up and deliver them. The department absenteeism is done within my office by the secretarial staff. Uh, we track the absenteeisms. We place the coverage in buildings using mainly our floating staff uh, to cover the outages in buildings that actually need them. And those are mainly the smaller elementary schools that are one and two man buildings that you have to cover on a daily basis because that's all they have. Uh, we process all the bills for supplies and materials uh, for everything within the, the district for our department. Our work audit scheduling is done through School Dude. Uh, it's a great program. We, in fact, I believe it's moving out to, it started out as a, a K-12 to program. And it's moving now out into colleges and universities uh, because it's been tested and it does work well. To date, we have 2,263 closed work orders, 29 in process, and 138 new ones. Uh, that was as of last Monday when I was supposed to be here, but uh, it's moving a lot. Every year you see these numbers climb and it's come a long way. I mean, the guys are really doing much better at tracking their work orders and filling them out, including their time and what it would cost for that service to be done by an outside individual. Uh, facility scheduling is done through our facilities use coordinator in our office, and she also has uh, the building scheduling coordinators in each one of the buildings. That, since its implementation, has gone through a few changes uh, that the committee's aware of, but it's been working really well. Uh, we've tied it in this year with School Dude so that when buildings are scheduled, it automatically turns on the heat in the buildings, which was a problem before somebody would rent a building and forget to tell someone else and you get there a little chilly in the building. Uh, this kind of takes care of it. The building use fees have always been reviewed and comes in front of this committee to set the rate. And that's really it. Thank you for allowing us the time to briefly talk to you about our department and I just want to say thank you to all the men and women of the department because they're the ones that really kind of make it happen every day. Uh, sometimes I kind of think of them as the little unsung heroes of the district. You know, they're there every day, they have a function, they do their function. A lot of people don't really know they're there until something doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. And right. yeah. all of a sudden everybody realizes, oh yeah, there was somebody there. Uh, but. They do. They do a hell of a job, and they're very proud of what they do, and and they're trying to do a good work for you people. Thank you. Anybody have any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great job. You. And, and I, I told Chris the other night, the last meeting, that uh, we're very appreciative of all the work that's done, and especially your 
your group and Frank um, go back and tell them we appreciate all the hard work. Thank you. And the buildings are proof that they're all kept in tip-top shape. I've said it before, I'll put these schools up against any schools in the state. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. And now we have the uh, mid-cycle plan review of the superintendent's annual plan update. Yes, tonight I have um, an update, a mid-cycle update for you regarding uh, my goals and uh, within the packet uh, tonight, there, there's an um, update statement or progress statement. Uh, the first goal that I had was to um, deploy, uh, refine, and, and get the uh, strategic plan out, which is known as the 2020 plan, uh, and that was to communicate the plan, uh, generate quick reference documents for easy access to key information, and review the uh, re review the renewed plan for with district uh, school um, and, and administration and as you can see at the bottom of that page the first page uh, my goal uh, progress statement indicates that the strategic plan the 2020 plan is complete and a variety of dissemination uh, opportunities are in play including the 2020 plan on a page given to every staff member in the district and to every student's family promoted on social media platforms printable PDFs on the website um, and we're using a product called Issue, uh, which pr provides a readable uh, embedded uh, document that can easily go on websites. Um, and the, pool, uh, the full printed version is available uh, for limited quantities. What we try to do with the, the strategic plan is uh, let everyone know that we had the, the plan on the page, the card that we got sent out to everybody, but we, we believe that the, um, the, the deeper, richer, uh, online uh, version, it, we wanted it to be something that is easy to m uh, maneuver and manipulate. So we believe that that is something that um, we hope that people are um, going to uh, see and, and be interested in. And of course, that document is um, part of our district planning. So you know, when we go through goal setting opportunities with our staff, our administrators, uh, that plan will be of, of great interest as we go through those opportunities. Um, goal two um, was taking a look at um, the Commonwealth uh, Comprehensive Full Day Kindergarten Program. And I think uh, many of you, all of you at the table are aware of the benchmarks that we have hit thus far. I think we started with an idea uh, and it's grown to the point where we are uh, preparing to uh, take this all the way to town meeting. So uh, to date, the progress statement reads a full day kindergarten model supported by the Plymouth School Committee has been included into 2016 school, um, it, excuse, excuse me, the 2016-17 fiscal budget, fiscal, um, fiscal year budget. To date, the school committee and board of selectmen have voted unanimously to support the budget that will allow uh, introduction of the plan model to the community. Uh, we've had presentations at different locations. We had a community presentation here at PCIS um, in front of the school committee. Uh, we presented in front of um, the board of selectmen. Um, we are uh, going to see how the Finance Committee recommendation will, will come forth. We don't have that yet. Um, and of course, like I, we've mentioned from the beginning, uh, we have to get all the way to town meeting. Uh, and that's something that we, um, uh, we know will be challenging. But again, uh, that will determine if, if this actually um, will be successful for the community. So that's well in play. Uh, we do have videos and information that's, that are out uh, on the internet. and. Um, you can see that uh, the um, social media aspects of what we're doing seem to be very popular. So people are getting the information. There's uh, some good comments online as to uh, what people are, are really um, understanding about full day K and its, and its future. So hopefully um, we'll see some uh, level of success with that. Uh, the next goal is taking a look at uh, the whole idea of um, uh, wellness in our community and uh, really looking at opportunities to develop, to develop uh, resiliency models in our schools. Uh, one of the things that we have done uh, in the district, and we've rolled this out to every elementary school in the district, and I plan to have um, the researchers from Beth Israel, uh, excuse me, from Harvard Medical School and Reebok come to uh, the committee in, in, uh, in, short, uh, in a short period of time to give you an update on the research to tell you what 
um, how this uh, morning workout program is really impacting the lives of the students here in Plymouth. So uh, the goal three progress statement indicates that we have worked with uh, Plymouth Youth Development, Development Collaborative to introduce opportunities for parents and key stakeholders to gain information on resources available to those in need. In addition, the district has partnered with Reebok, Harvard Medical School, and uh, Beth Israel uh, uh, Plymouth uh, to introduce an early morning workout program. And also we are gearing up. We had our first meeting last week uh, to work on uh, Dream Ride 2. And I know that there are a couple people at this table sitting on the school committee side that um, I'm going to try to entice to ride with me. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but that is something that uh, the whole theme with the Dream Ride is to really focus on taking care of your body so that your body can take care of you. So that's we're working on uh, branding and theming uh, and the whole uh, student package. Uh, we're also going to partner with uh, the 400th to really uh, promote uh, the beginning of, of, of this great community. So uh, look forward to more information on that. Um, the next goal, goal four, uh, is to really look at uh, the whole concept of social media and communication. And I think that, and I, I've said this to Nancy uh, just the other day, that I think we've, we've, we, we were nowhere with social media and now we, we are somewhere. Um, I think we've made an impact with um, the community, uh, community stakeholders and leaders as far as um, you know, just becoming in touch with what ha what's happening in the schools. Uh, we did have uh, um, significant um, information going out from my office in the form of a newsletter. We had information going out regarding robocalls, but one thing was missing, and that really was the whole concept of social media. And tonight in your packet, you'll have some uh, analytics uh, that you can take a look at um, in the form of a pamphlet, which we will um, have on social media and we'll send that out to the community so that they, they can get an understanding of uh, how our social media is actually working um, and, and how we use it in the district. So um, the special report really identifies that 73% uh, 70, of the U.S. population is using social media in 2015 and I think when you look back 15 years ago, 10 years ago, social media had a whole different uh, uh, context. So when you take a look at where we have gone um, and how people rely on it and how people rely on short segments, not large bits of content uh, or large segments of com content, um, I think uh, we've, we've arrived at, at, at that game. Um, this report is, is intuitive. It gives you um, an idea of uh, from September 2015 to January 2016. Um, we started with Facebook uh, right now we have um, 1,710 followers. We have uh, 48 average news likes per week. We have, um, which is interesting to me, and it tells you the demographic pieces of who's actually looking at Facebook. 76% uh, of our followers are on Facebook are between the ages of 25 and 54. So it's graduates and parents. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's our, our, our population there. Uh, 352,000 uh, total number of people who have seen our posts. So um, that's, uh, it's kind of ironic how we have uh, 1. Uh, 1,400 people from the UK um, have actually looked at uh, posts that we've posted. So I would say that this is an indication of, of our relationship and I would be interested to see how this number increases between now and 2020. Uh, hopefully it will increase at a much uh, larger rate. The top posts for social media for the district, uh, Full Day K, number one. Inspirational Education Quote, number two. School Committee Approves the 17 Budget, number three. Uh, my Snow Day video, um, of course, I'm sure it was all kids watching it. Um, and number five, School Safety Letter to Parents. So I think if you take a look at, um, this is one way for us to really indicate what that segment from ages 25 to uh, 54 are looking at and it does seem to be the higher level of really content information stuff. Uh, the full day K is pretty important. The educational code, I don't know how that moved up into the rankings there, but obviously people like those. Um, but you know, the, the budget, uh, the, the video and, and uh, the safety, those were significant messages that we really, really wanted our community to, um, to see. I think it's encouraging that our 
people on, on Facebook are, are listening to the budget, which you, I, I didn't really think that our budget would, would, would rise up to, the, to that level, but I think that's a, good, uh, that's a good piece. That means people are listening. If we look at Twitter, we have um, 743 followers, uh, 33 average new followers per week. Uh, if you look at the demographics, um, 35 to 54, 50 per, 56 percent, and 25 to 34 is 37 percent. So you can see that uh, we have a, a pretty wide spread there. Um, we have 4,696 average monthly visits, and we have uh, 29,300 uh, plus uh, times our tweets have been seen. Uh, so you can kind of see uh, how uh, that is, um, is shaping up. Um, retweets, we have 1,500. And uh, uh, Plymouth North and Plymouth South High School DECA photo, that was the number one tweet. Uh, School Thanksgiving Collage was number two. And um, um, Madman Elementary School Plymouth Plantation guest was number three. So you can actually see how Twitter is uh, shaping out. And then you can take a look at Instagram. Uh, we have um, 376 followers, 87 posts, and 1,900 plus likes. Uh, we have uh, 3,284 profile views, and then Vimeo. Um, Vimeo is where we uh, house our videos in the district, and we have produced um, from September 1 to today 156 videos, and we have over 30,194 plays. So when you take a look at the different um, means of communication, I think if you uh, look at uh, covering our, our, our bases and, and getting more information out there. Um, you know, I know this was a, a goal that um, we really wanted to, and I say we, is I know the school committee was very interested in looking at how we uh, broaden the reach of communication. I think uh, the data here today, uh, although it's only uh, mid-year through the year, I think it is positive identifying that we are making uh, somewhat of an impact with sharing information using social media. So um, that's, that's positive. Um, goal five, Astro District uh, continues to address the facility need at the high school level. Um, there's a huge emphasis on getting uh, South High School com construction piece uh, uh, underway and actually uh, to make progress. I would say that uh, any update that we have tonight, uh, the credit goes to the weather. Uh, and to be completely honest, we have an absolutely um, competent, unbelievably competent construction team. Um, and I think uh, on Saturday you'll have an opportunity to see the, the benefits of having um, a very functional building committee and an, a, a very dedicated owner's project manager and a variety of people at that table every Wednesday to make sure this thing gets done. And it's a school that will last um, for a lot longer than the first Plymouth South. So um, with that said, um, that's the goal. Um, goal six is the study of determining cause and effect uh, of um, uh, educational practice. And, and um, this is done with the, uh, I'm using the, the book um, uh, David and Goliath by um, Malcolm Gladwell. And I know we had a little discussion uh, the, the, the first time I brought this up. And I can tell you that um, we are at chapter eight and we've had at our uh, meetings on Friday, we've had very, very good dis discussions on some compelling uh, stories on how people's lives have been transformed based on their, the conditions that they have engaged in um, in, in their lives. And I think it's uh, been very motivating for me to, to lead the discussion, but I think our staff um, have had really good um, opportunities to really think how those type of strategies and those type of instances can really impact what happens in their buildings every day. And how does it impact leadership? Because uh, a lot of this is really centered on how do we take the diverse backgrounds that we have in front of us every day, not only our staff, but our, our students and our paras, our families that come together, and how do we use uh, uh, different strategies and working with them to inspire them to do great things. Um, it's been a, a, a great opportunity for us, and I, I do believe, um, even though I have to remind our staff to read their chapter before um, the meeting, I, I think it's, it's, it's led to uh, a great study and a great opportunity to work with our administrators on a focused uh, effort. So with that said, um, 
that's my mid-cycle update, and I tell you, we've, we've, uh, I believe we've made some progress in what we initially set up to, to, to do. Very good. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Oops. Very good. Yeah. Reports? Oh, no, it's my phone. Because my mic was down. Sorry. Um, reports and proposals from committee members. Anybody have anything they'd like to bring up? Ms. Badger. I have a bunch since my plane was canceled last time on my way back. So I have what I was going to say at the Ms. last. Hunt did I step told in her. for you, though. Yes, she her. did. She told me that she did do my my, my alumni association meeting. But I just wanted to put out a couple things. I know I sent out an email about the Pilgrim Area Collaborative Open House on February 9th. Um, it's going to be from 3.30 to 6.30 at the 42 Industrial Park, and they're very excited um, to show us all the buildings. So if anybody wants to go, just RSVP to that. I think the number and everything was in that email. Um, they also wanted me to pass on the word that they are very thankful for PCIS and like everything. They know that they're right now looking for a new place, but the community and the environment that was creative, created there for them, even though they're outside of the age demographic and they you know wouldn't normally fit into a middle school they felt really just really appreciated and part of the community so they just really want to make sure that I said that um, so that piece so please pass that on we will. Thank you. Um, they're really sad to have to leave but um, then again our alumni association is 28 218 is our next meeting and our new chair is now Russ Bozak um, Plymouth North what are you 2000 yeah, I got an email from him today so he's our new chair, um, which is exciting. Um, we also, a little bit of non-school committee related things. We've got the Pan Mass Challenge Kids Ride, which is set for June 26th. I don't have any more information than that right now. Um, and the, there was a traffic meeting um, for, South, for this in, at South Elementary on February 11th to deal with a lot of the issues that we're having in traffic on the south part of Plymouth. I promised I'd pass that on, so I am doing that. Yes. <laughs> that is with the Redbrook project, correct? Yes. Okay, because so that's about the... About the, uh, uh, I think it's... Exit 3. Exit 3, yes. all the different right. potential um, lights and yes, yes, changes yes. to roads and stuff that That's to accommodate name. what's going on over there i think there's also the crosswalks and stuff discussion as part of it um but just to get your questions answered um i know i've heard a lot of people talk about how you know now to get if you get off exit three at a certain time of day you're like up the the on ramp you know on the off ramp so it's a little bit crazy if you're trying to take a left off a halfway pond i know myself you just sit there sometimes and you're like oh here comes more people you think you can go and you're like here they come so you know i think it's important that everyone comes to hear that and you know it should be a good meeting and that's it <laughs> Very good anybody else we we talked a little bit before the meeting i mean mr gordon maybe he wants to about the, the, the play his hand no, is go right. ahead Oh, yeah. um, many of us went to see Shrek, mm. uh, and I'm going to tell you that um, I was going through the channels on Sunday night, and I happened to come across uh, a performance of Grease that was on for three hours, and I stopped and watched for a little bit. And while I was watching Grease, I found myself thinking back to Shrek, uh, because the costumes, the choreography, the, the performances, the professionalism of our students, they're only eighth graders, and I was comparing it to uh, seventh and eighth graders and sixth graders too, and I'm comparing it to uh, ABC, NBC, whatever it was, uh, professional. Yeah. It was, it was, it was it you could compare it, Absolutely. putting everything, putting everything in, in context, you could compare it. It was, it was, and we all know it was, it was, it was remarkable. It was. Yeah. it was a great show, and it, it's funny. My wife and I had the same comment when it was over, I couldn't believe it. these were middle school kids putting on this level of quality. That show was very, very well done. And, and you keep reminding sorry. yourself that they were only sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Yeah. Very good. Anybody else? Um, well, uh, in addition to that, I was just going to mention that I attended the uh, early childhood fair on Saturday, good. Yeah. and it had a good turnout. At least while I was there. And a lot of a lot of vendors, um, school department, and parents, and you know, I kind of walked around the why and and whatnot, and um, it was very well received, very well attended. Police, fire department were there, and 
So it seems to be growing every year. And, uh, you know, I met a parent who just moved here two weeks ago, and she was very appreciative that she had this venue to scope things out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it's new parents or someone moving to the district, they, they find it, found it very helpful. Good. Ms. Hunt? Oh, I have nothing, actually. Okay. Ms. Hunt? No, I just thought of something, actually. Um, one thing on Saturday that I had a chance to attend was the Plymouth 400th had a tailgate party for anyone that purchased um, license plates. And I was really proud to see a lot of our students there, um, the, the girls cheerleading, the varsity cheerleaders. Actually, the freshmen were the ones that were there. Um, were there and they cheered on everybody as they came in. They did a big cheer at the beginning. They adapted some of the words to say Plymouth 400 instead of Plymouth North. Um, and then there were several members of the Plymouth 400 street team that were some of our Plymouth North seniors. And they basically walked around and interviewed everybody. So I was really proud of our kids for that. Um, and then the other thing is the girls cheerleading team collected food at the basketball game this week and they actually delivered them today the food um, to the food pantry so that was a really you know nice community service learning project for them good and you had uh, actually I have a question I have a question that I've been wanting to ask for like four or five weeks and I keep forgetting and I just thought of it uh, the, the when the uh, when the basketball uh, the glass basketball uh, the new one got broken at uh, West Elementary School who who replaced that and at, at whose expense um, well that's a little complicated oh. but I have the answer okay <laughs> um, the backboard uh, is off we had it taken down immediately our maintenance staff uh, took it down and I think we um, the, you know it's it was a community project but it's our property so what we did is we took it down um, the young um, man who was involved in throwing the rock at the backboard um, the backboard was um, broken was um, a group of kids playing on the weekend threw a rock at the, they're trying to make rock into the hoop one threw a big rock cracked the board it was a sizable rock so what happened was um, the young man had to go to court and the um, uh, uh, the court decided that this, the child would do um, some restitution so the child has been working with the recreation department and uh, will work with us in the summer for a extended period of time to actually work that off and then we will um, come up with a, uh, a, a replacement and we will we will purchase that so, um, but it was a hardship situation, and it was um, in order to make it work. He, the individual, along with some of the friends that were at that venue during that time, have all are signing off on hours, and will work off um, the amount of money that it took to. Yeah, I, I, I knew about that. I was, I was wondering. Sometimes <laughs> warranties will cover uh, even even malicious damage yeah. when it so, comes so soon after the the construction. Yeah, that's a that I understand, and um, you know when it it's pretty clear that it was. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But sometimes they will cover yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So. Anybody else? Yes, building sir. committee. Actually, since we last met, the building committee didn't have a meeting, but I pulled a couple of things off of. Uh, yes. Off of the notes from last Wednesday's construction meeting, and and Doctor Maestas referred to one of them in some detail early and that is the, the, the concrete and it was projected last Wednesday that the work would begin tomorrow and it looks like the weather is holding for that so February 2nd who would have guessed it that on February 2nd we'd be putting con working on concrete the other thing that I want to report that came out of last week's uh, construction meeting was that uh, we're on a critical path schedule now for turning the fields over to the public schools that is the uh, the track the tennis courts and uh, the turf field and that's supposed to be turned over to us for use on uh, August the 12th, 2016. So we're into seven months, just about seven months for that to be done. And from what I read on the notes, because I wasn't at the meeting, that, and you said that you, uh, Dr. Mice said earlier, that our general contractor is a top quality firm and they believe they're gonna be uh, ready to turn those fields over. We talked about it um, 
Wednesday, which, you know, again, the fields are right on, we're on target right now. And, and if you drive by there now, the fields aren't gone and the track is gone. So um, I believe that they will meet it. Um, they, uh, seven months isn't a lot of time. So we have, we got to push. Um, but they feel very confident that we will be on, um, you know, Principal Fry, uh, I think she is um, very vocal on that timeline and she will let them know that, you know, we have kids showing up, so they better be ready to turn them over. And, but the committee needs to know there's substantial penalty built into the contract uh, if they don't make it, so it'll come out of their pocket, and so that's another incentive. Does that include the tennis courts also? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I know they're going to try to reuse as much as possible, right? Uh, uh, they're they're. Which has me concerned. Yeah, they're There's not going to. Three times it's it's going to be new. They're it's doing demolition on that. Yeah. Yeah. They are going to. They did yeah. decide to just rip it all up. The track is all gone. Oh no, I know the, the track. The, I mean the, the tennis, tennis court courts. will be absolutely. Yeah. So. Because remember we have resurfaced it and it uh, goes the, the, right the, back to the way the it was. The surface is is cracked. Mm. No, it's got cracks all over it. We filled them too. So yeah, good. All right, good. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Dr. Cool. Appointments, leaves of absence, and resignations. Well, considering we met last week, we have a very short list mm. this evening. We have just nine appointments for the uh, coaching and, and advisor section. Thank you. You're welcome. We have to delegate more things to you. <laughs> I, it's my 15, I feel like 15 seconds you know, of fame. I'll give you that two seconds there. Uh, homeschooling uh, plan approval. Yes, tonight we have um, one homeschool plan that is uh, on the agenda for your review and ultimate approval. It has met the guidelines set forth by the district, has been reviewed by Dr. Halpin's office, and I recommend approval. And do I hear a motion? Go ahead. Go ahead. I move that the home education plan for the school year 2015-2016 be accepted and approved as presented. Seconded by Ms. Badger. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yes. The accounts payable warrant, Ms. Badger. Where school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and warrant for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the reports and accounts payable warrant S020416, dated February 4th, 2016, in the amount of $890,320.50 as presented. Mr. Morgan seconds Second. it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Very good. And before you adjourn, uh, just want to double check. Our extended meeting is starts at eight o'clock on Saturday morning. Uh, we're it's doing the tour, so we're starting what time? Yeah, the tour starts at eight thirty. Like to it? arrive at around eight thirty for some hot beverages, coffee. It's going to be a cold day, and then we're planning to go over to the new site at nine o'clock. Okay, eight thirty. So oh, so we go to the Center Hill. I'm a South Middle. You can drop no, your no, South, South, Middle. South Middle School. South Middle. South Middle. Oh, there we'll first. At, we'll be at South Middle for the whole that's meeting. That's where the meeting okay. is. Okay. In the library. Oh, that's where the meeting is? Yeah. The meeting's in the uh, library. Oh, okay. We thought we'd make it easy, easy to Convenient. get to. And uh, uh, we should bring hard hats. I mean, we have. We all we'll have, have hard hats. Ready. Yeah. Oh, we have, have one. Bring it if you don't need one. If you, if we, we have, have some. Hard we all have them, I think, aren't we? No. I have no. my own from years no. ago. I have several. <laughs> I don't know. They took them away from me. Are we supposed to have hard hats? I have anyway, typically yeah. people to, yeah, you know what? Did I miss it? If you, we have some in the trailer, so. I'll have them. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. I just need to let Tom know how many, um, we need to just make sure he has plenty, but we had them for the groundbreaking, so. Okay. We have a full agenda. Yes, we do. For that, that day, so yes. unfortunately it's a, the whole day. I just leave no from wine. there and go right <laughs> and to, then on to the full day. Gala. <laughs> and then the gala. the gala, yep. Okay. Well, we're way ahead of schedule, so that's a good sign, even though we had a rocky start. Apologize for that. Um, so without objection, we're adjourned at uh, 8.43. That's... Begley, didn't even have to...